Imagine yourself at your favorite Barnes & Noble, browsing through the shelves looking for that perfect next read, or the next book to add to your growing TBR. You'd like to be browsing in peace. This is a solo date, after all. A chance to spend time with yourself doing something you love. But the guy who keeps following you around the store has other plans. That's what Michaela Witter went through when she took herself on a date to her local Barnes & Noble. In a TikTok documenting her solo date, she said a man kept watching her through a hole between the shelves. And I couldn't tell if I was being paranoid or if he was just reading a book and he just happened to be in that little corner. And then things got weird. But I definitely didn't expect him to do this. Like, what the actual... And the whole time I'm thinking I'm fine because he hasn't said anything or touched me or anything. She even spoke to him. What are you doing? I don't want to stop. What are you doing? But just when Michaela thought she was in the clear, she saw something suspicious. But then you notice that he goes over and does the same thing to this girl. And he'll crouch down low and pretend like he's doing something and then smell? I don't know. Michaela told the staff about the man, but he seemed to be leaving the store. She quickly went to her car and debriefed on the situation. I'm so disgusted and... I feel like really violated, even though you didn't touch me, but it just feels really gross and weird. Sadly, if the comments are anything to go by, this isn't an isolated incident. This video is so exemplary of what it's like to be a woman intending to take yourself out for a fun day just to be harassed by a man. I'm grateful you caught this on video. People don't believe this happens if they haven't experienced it. And it wasn't just Michaela that had bad experiences with the Barnes & Noble stalker. Another young woman posted a video of her experience on TikTok from March 2023. Are you following me? No. My bad. <laughs> yeah. The woman's cousin reported him to Barnes & Noble staff after he left. It seems these reports led to action, because on August 11th, he was arrested for an unrelated crime involving peeping on a family with children. And he was no stranger to these kinds of charges. 37-year-old Khalees Crowder appeared in court a few days later on August 15th and pleaded no contest to his history of heaping, prowling, and residential burglaries dating back to 2011. Khalees was ordered to spend 60 days in county jail, but the relief his victims had was short-lived. On August 16th, just one day after his court appearance, he was released due to overcrowding at jail. But sometimes, karma works in funny ways. Khalees was arrested again on August 17th after he failed to register as a offender in the city. Will his behavior ever change? It's hard to say, but there is a noticeable pattern. On top of his allegations in court, former LA Lakers star Robert Ori's stepdaughter was stalked by Khalees. According to his wife, this man stalked my teenage daughter at our home over 10 years ago. He went to jail only to come out and continue the same behavior. If there's a problem in a store, you can simply avoid that store. But what if the stalker has found you in your daily routine? Jamie Coots was carrying out some errands one spring day in downtown Vancouver in broad daylight, something everyone should feel safe doing. But she didn't feel safe. She noticed a man was following her, and in the age of social media and technology, she did the only thing she could think of to protect herself. She started filming. Jamie tried to remain calm as she walked, even stepping off path allowing the man to pass, but continued following closely and appeared unfazed by the filming, looking right into the camera multiple times. Jamie walked around the neighborhood for several blocks, hoping he'd finally take the hint and stop following her. But to her dismay, he was still right behind her after 40 minutes. As terrifying as this situation sounds, she had luck on her side. Noticing a busy state park near Union Street, she seeked safety in numbers. Hey, do you mind if I, guys, if I sit with you guys? This guy's literally been following me in circles yeah, cool. for like 40 minutes and I've been recording it. As someone else at the park approached the apparent stalker to confront him, he immediately walked away. Something many viewers commended them for. Others shared Jamie's fear. The fact that he stopped and stood there while she asked to sit with those people. I felt panicked for her. Terrifying. Ew. When she calls him out, he sees her pointing at him and just stands there. This is scary. I'm concerned for her safety. Some noticed subtle details that just didn't sit right. He's done this before. 
You can tell, he was prepared. He was wearing dark clothing, a mask that covered nearly his entire face, and wore clothing that didn't have labels or identifying distinctive markings. With a few sharing their speculations about an odd movement, anyone else noticed he was holding something in his jacket? That little jiggle of his hand taking out of his pocket was him releasing the grip on something. If we take a look at the clip again, when Jamie points at the apparent stalker, he looks away briefly as he begins to shake his hand loose from his pocket, to which he then grabs his hood. It's unclear if he had anything in his pocket, but it's no doubt he was behaving strangely. The stalker was later revealed as a 35-year-old man who has over 30 convictions dating back to 2015, including charges of assault, assault with weapon, and uttering threats. In a weird way, carrying errands in public spaces allows you to seek help from bystanders, but what if the stalker goes completely unnoticed as you're walking right to the doorway of your home? TikTok user Hey It's Phoebes was doing exactly that walking back to the place she was supposed to feel most comfortable and secure after work. She felt safe on her walk, and when she arrived home, she went through her normal evening routine like she would any other day. But then she decided to check her doorbell camera and found something truly disturbing. At the time, Phoebes appeared to live in a multi-unit housing, which meant it was normal to see people passing by every now and then. But what she witnessed was not a passerby. He was a spectator. Here's how it went down. At 9.30 p.m., 15 minutes before Phoebes arrived home, a man was seen walking up the stairs outside her door. He paused at the top of the staircase and walked back down, looking at the hallway before he turned his attention to Phoebes' door. As he peeked into Phoebes' residence, he pulled over his hood, peeked in some more, then turned around and left. Roughly an hour later, at 10.50 p.m., the same man reappeared on camera, coming from the hallway opposite of the staircase, this time heading downstairs. 15 minutes later, at 11.05 p.m., the man emerged from the bottom staircase, concealing his face with his hood and ducking as he rushed to the hallway. Nine minutes later, at 11.14 p.m., the man ran from the hallway back downstairs, 21 minutes later, at 11.35 p.m., Phoebes' boyfriend returns home and enters their residence. Nine minutes later, at 11.44 p.m., the hooded man emerged from the bottom staircase, briefly looking at Phoebes' door before turning away and walking through the hallway again. And that ended his suspicious behavior for the night, a situation that lasted over two hours. Shocked, Phoebes shared the video on TikTok with a warning. Ladies, please be careful. I had just gotten off work and didn't see anyone following me. People in the comments shared her concern. It seems as if he's been tracking the time that you get off of work to when you come home since he came down five minutes later. Please be safe. Boys always say we do too much, but then stuff like this happens to us and you wonder why. Imagine you were out there just five minutes later. Glad you're okay. She later posted a follow-up, explaining what she did next. I did contact security that night and let them know I was able to send the footage to them. But her safety wasn't guaranteed. The next day, this is the part that pissed me off. The next day, I told the office lady of the apartments and I showed them the footage. And then she said, well, what do you want me to do about it? So she decided it was time to go letting her viewers know she was in the process of moving out and was staying with a friend temporarily while she figured out her living situation. And while she informed both building security and the police of what happened, there haven't been any updates since. Most of these stories have discussed potential harm that could have occurred as a result of stalking, but what about when the worst case scenario becomes reality? Imagine yourself posting innocent selfies in your home, you're careful not to show the exterior of your home or building, but of course, you know the best lighting is natural, and plenty of it flows in from your window. Surely, as long as the outside can't be seen, you'll be safe. So you take the selfies, edit them to perfection, and post for your friends, family, and followers to enjoy, then move on with your life. But someone who's obsessed with you would want nothing more than your undivided time and attention. They're paying close attention to every move you make. Hibiki Sato understands this all too well. 
He has a deep obsession with a Japanese pop idol named Ina Matsuoka, who was part of a girl group called Tenchisuki Nukiyomi. And then 27-year-old Hibiki hasn't hesitated to share his love with then 21-year-old Ina on his social media platform of choice, Twitter. He posted tweet after tweet sharing his love for Ina, going back to at least June 2019. I really love Ina Nun. I'm glad to be alive. I guess it's Ina. Matsuoka-san has always been cute, but her cuteness is accelerating. He shared photos of himself out dining with signed photos of Ina. He complimented everything Ina did. He documented all the times he traveled to see Ina live since June 2019. He celebrated her 21st birthday virtually. Thank you for being born. Lots of balloons, lots of happiness. Ina Nan's birthday makes me happier than my own. I started crying, but I was still on the train. He even met her at multiple performances and events, buying Polaroids of and with Ina, each lovingly decorated, dated, and signed by Ina. In the span of the six months he became a fan of Ina and her group, Hibiki amassed a collection of no less than 197 Polaroids, a tally he documented on Twitter and an obsession that runs this rampant means he's willing to go to any length to find a clue to his fave's location. He gathered several selfies he knew were taken at her home and zoomed in closer than anyone else would think to look, paying special attention to her eyes. Of course her eyes were beautiful, but that wasn't the point. It was what her eyes revealed that held more interest. See, Habiki noticed a familiar building in the reflection shown in her pupils, her local train station. So he painstakingly went through selfie after selfie and cross-referenced the buildings on Google Street View, eventually tracking down which train station was hers. But that wasn't all he did. Remember how harmless it seemed standing inside your apartment with the soft, natural light filling your space? Hibiki studied videos taken inside his idol's home to examine the curtain placement and the direction of that coveted natural light to determine what precise building she lived in, too. And eventually, on September 1st, 2019, he had enough information to make his move. This was the same day Ina would be performing alongside her idol group, an experience Hibiki had been so carefully documenting on his Twitter page. And these would be the last personalized Polaroid photos Hibiki would ever get his hands on. Because later that night, around 11 p.m., Hibiki used all his knowledge studying Ina's whereabouts to allegedly stake out his victim, follow her home, and proceed to SA her as she entered her building. He fled the scene shortly after the alleged attack. If Hibiki thought a face-to-face -face encounter with his idol was enough to sate his curiosity, he was mistaken. The day after the attack, Ina posted a tweet saying she was feeling unwell and needed to take a break from social media. Hibiki replied, Get some rest. Take care. A few days later, he retweeted photos a fan shared of her from a concert and complimented a video she posted. On September 6th, Ina's idol group made a statement saying Ina was under the weather and would not be doing live performances. Hibiki replied, I hope Minami-chan's health gets better soon. On September 12th, Ina's idol group updated their audience on Ina's health, and Hibiki wrote, I've been waiting forever. I want to see you again with a smile. Over the course of four days, Hibiki made several posts about missing someone, most likely his idol. I think of you today, too. I miss you. On September 17th, over two weeks after the incident, Ina's idol group posted a statement on Twitter in Japanese about what happened, confirming she was attacked by a fan. Matsuoka herself has suffered damage to her face, which is the lifeblood of being an idol, and is in a very difficult mental state. She is slowly making her way to recovery. It may not be a good idea to say that I am lucky, but I consider myself lucky that I escaped with only a facial wound and a back injury, and that the incident ended with an attempted forcible indecency that resulted in bodily injury. On October 1st, Hibiki was arrested and admitted to charges of causing injury by forcible indecency. While it's not clear why Hibiki overstepped his boundaries, he admitted in an interrogation 
I was always the first to book and participate in events, according to a Japanese news outlet. After taking a break from performing, Ina returned for a one-night-only concert in January 2020. However, she seems to have stepped away from the idol industry altogether and has deleted her Twitter account entirely. So, how can we prevent attacks like these from happening in the future? If your schedule allows it, one key thing you can do is change your routine as much as possible. Having too much consistency in your comings and goings can make it all the easier for assailants to track you. It's also ideal to employ the buddy system whenever possible. The less time you're alone, the less vulnerable you are. If you believe you're in danger, tell as many trusted people as you can about your suspicions, particularly friends, family, and colleagues. Keep your emergency contacts handy on your cell phone in case you need to reach out for help. But even if you aren't in active danger, there can be other preventative measures you can take with your social media presence. Select the highest possible security settings on your social media profiles and avoid using personal information that can lead to identity theft, like your birthday, address, or full name. As well, be careful about what you share vacation destinations, favorite restaurants, articles, and accidental reflections of your whereabouts can teach a possible stalker about your interests, whereabouts, and plans. Consider delaying your social media posts until you're long gone from the location to avoid giving stalkers a chance to find you in real time. And when you're done scrolling through your social media, log out every single time especially if there's a chance someone can use the device after you're done with it. Most importantly, if there's anything these stories can teach us, it's to trust your instincts. If you feel uncomfortable, reach out for help, even if it feels like it's nothing. As we've seen in these stories, it's better to be safe than sorry. Stay aware and take care.